the topic that we'll be talking about today is um, the gas laws and the kinetic theory model. So before getting into the content itself, uh, let's just go over the things that we'll be discussing today. The first thing that we'll be talking about is the basic assumptions of kinetic molecular theory. The second thing is uh, pressure of a gas and how it affects on the volume and on the temperature. Uh, third one is effect of pressure, volume of the gas. Uh, next one is the concept of absolute temperature. The other one is uh, Charles law. Then we'll be talking about Charles law everyday examples and how we see that happening in our daily lives. Next, we'll see Boyle's law, and we'll also be talking about uh, the examples, similar uh, as we saw in Charles' law. And then last one is the pressure law. So uh, these are the things that we'll be talking about today. Uh, so let's get into it. Okay, so uh, the basic assumptions of kinetic molecular theory, this is not um, very in-depth in the syllabus of IGCSE, but it's very important to understand these things. Um, in order to really go into the next topics that we'll be studying, um, you know, as prerequisite of those topics. So by the late 19th century, scientists had begun accepting uh, the atomic theory of matter, started relating it to individual mole molecules. The kinetic molecular theory of gases comes from observations that scientists made about gases to explain their macroscopic properties. The following are the basic assumptions of kinetic molecular theory. So um, the first thing that we need to know when we are talking about all these laws um, that are basically built on the kinetic molecular theory is that the gas, that the volume occupied by the individual particles of a gas is negligible compared to the volume of gas, gas itself. Now, if you think about it, it basically says that... Um, yeah, so if this is a container in which we have, you know, it's it's a closed container, it's a bottle that is uh, closed or sealed. So we have some gas inside it, we've filled it with some gas. It's very important to note that the, that the volume of the particles itself or the molecules itself, like if you combine the volume of each uh, gas molecule and you add all of them up, it will be very, very, very little to um, the volume of this whole container. So that's basically because of these huge intermolecular spaces. So we can write it that the, uh, the volume of particles with the subscript of P is less than, less than, less than, oh, sorry, I should erase this one less than, so. An extra one um, is you know way less than the volume of the container itself um, volume of the container so uh, this is something to note and we take in uh, credit when we're talking about the ideal gases or you know the topics that we'll be studying further so container yeah, so volume of particles is way negligible or less than the volume of container. Second assumption or the second thing that we need to keep in our mind, let's just not call in, uh, call them assumptions. These are just points that we need to keep in mind when we're talking about the ideal gas equation or or even if we're not talking about that, the just, just the laws that we'll be studying, uh, you know, after this. The particle of an ideal gas is ex exert no attractive forces on each other or on their uh, surroundings. So it's basically that, that that there aren't any, you know, like other external attractive forces or, um, you know, that they, that they exert on each other or on the uh, surroundings or on the other particles. The gas particles are in constant state of random motion and they move in straight lines until they collide with another body. It's uh, this is also a very just it's very intuitive that just uh, the gas particles as we you know imagine or think of them, 
that they are uh, just in a uh, state of random motion they don't have like a proper uh, path or like a same um sequenced motion that they follow every time it's just that they are in constant motion and they move in straight paths or straight lines until they collide with an object with another particle or with the walls or something like that so uh, the, the next the fourth point we've, we've talked about this we've talked about this um fourth point is that the collisions exhibited by gas particles are completely elastic when two molecules collide, total kinetic energy is conserved. We've uh, already discussed what elastic collisions are. Um, elastic and in elastic collisions, in both of them, um, momentum is conserved whatsoever in all of the collisions. However, in elastic collisions, what happens is that the kinetic energy is also um, conserved that the kinetic energy before the collision is equal to the kinetic energy after the collision. So we also model these collisions as uh, elastic collisions instead of modeling them as inelastic collisions. So the kinetic energy is basically conserved and kinetic energy is very important in this whole uh, concept of, uh, you know, the particles and how they move, especially in gases. So uh, it's very important to note that the kinetic energy is conserved before and after these collisions with the walls or with each other. So let's just say if there is a particle over here and then there is a particle over here. If this particle collides with this particle and I, whatsoever, uh, you know, even if they, you know, stick together, uh, that, that won't probably be possible in case of gases or in case of this model, but let's just say if they if this hits it and then it just rebounds back this particle rebounds back over here and then this bigger particle just you know moves a little further or just just changes its direction and whatever the case is um whatever the kind of collision is it's going to be elastic and uh, we model these collisions as elastic in all the cases so the average kinetic energy of a gas molecule is directly proportional to the absolute temperature only. Uh, this implies that all molecular um, motion ceases if the temperature is reduced to absolute zero. So the reason why we uh, always keep in mind or always state that uh, every molecule or uh, you know all particles of um, you know every state let it be solid, liquid, or gas. Um, molecules are in constant motion, like in solid, they are vibrating, and in liquid, they're sliding, and in gases, they're, you know, just uh, in random uh, haphazard motion. Whatever the case is, um, we never considered that they can be completely stopped or that their motion is ceased. That is because uh, it can only happen when the temperature is reduced to absolute uh, zero, which is ideally not possible. But uh, theoretically, if we talk about it, since average kinetic energy of the ga gas molecules or of, you know, the gas mo molecules were eventually turned to, you know, solid molecules or whatever, um, this, uh, they will always be in motion and it can only be achieved that these particles stop moving if and only if uh, the temperature is reduced to absolute zero. So we can write that the kinetic energy that the average kinetic energy, Ke, is directly proportional to temperature. Well, uh, also, instead of temperature, it's written absolute temperature. We're going to discuss uh, what exactly absolute temperature is. Uh, I'm sure you all have some idea of what it is already but we can get into it so pressure of a gas let's just discuss how the basically the pressure of a gas or how its dynamics change so the air forming around the earth's atmosphere stretches upwards a long way air has weight the air is in normal in a normal room weighs about the same as you do about 500 uh, newton because of its weight, the atmosphere exerts large pressure at sea level about uh, 10 raised to power 5, that is subscript, uh, sorry, superscript and not like that. So it's 10 raised to power 5 
were also written as 100 kilopascals. That is the pressure that is applied um, at sea level. So what happens is that, you know, this is if this is a room, air is filled with the room, you know, air has some particles and it it has some weight, obviously. So there is some, you know, if it, if it has some weight, if it has some force and it is acting on some area, so, so it's really plausible that it might be, you know, uh, exerting some pressure or some large pressure. So that's basically true that air does or the gas around us whatever it is, like, you know, in this environment, we're talking about air, it does apply a lot of, uh, exert a lot of pressure. And we, for, you know, as convention, we take the pressure that it exerts at sea level, and it is taken as 10 raised to power 5 or 100 kilopascals, um, which is also approximately equal to one atmosphere. So, you know, that's another unit that we have uh, calibrated in terms of the atmospheric pressure or atmospheres so this pre this pressure basically acts equally in all direction we've already discussed that in pressure chapters that uh, pressure acts equally in all direction or that's how we uh, ideally model it to ease our calculations and everything a gas in a container exerts pressure on the walls of the container if air is removed from a can by a vacuum pump the can collapses because the air pressure outside is greater than that of the inside. A space from which all the air has been removed is called a vacuum. So the reason why, uh, you know, if you have a glass, if you have an empty glass and it's just sitting on the table, the reason why it doesn't collapse or it it just stays how it is it is because the pressure that is inside. Okay, I, I, I filled it with something, but I, we have to just imagine it. Um, empty. So the, the reason why it just stays the way it is is because the pressure outside the container, this whole pressure outside, is equal to the pressure that will be inside this, uh, you know, container. However, if we have a closed bottle, and even if, when we have like closed bottles or closed surfaces, they do have air inside them. So that's why you know they don't uh, collapse. But what happens if we take out, you know, if we somehow just suck all the uh, air out of this container? So what happens is that if it's a vacuum, if it has no air, then obviously outside there is air and air is applying some pressure outside. So there's like this huge pressure of one ATM, one atmosphere that is equal to 100 kilopascals. And that's really a huge amount. So one atmospheric pressure outside and then no pressure or very less pressure inside. So obviously it's 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 going to exert some pressure on the walls and uh, consequently it's the bottle or whatever the container we had, it's going to collapse. Okay, so effect of pressure volume, we're getting into the main uh, laws now. So we've talked about you know the pressure that is being applied by some gas or air for example that we just discussed so when a gas is heated as air in jet engine its pressure as well as its volume may change like if you think about it just uh, you know using common sense that if if there's a gas and you heat it it's it's really simple to just imagine that its pressure might change that it, the molecules will go further away so that might change something about the pressure as well as its volume so to study the effect of temperature on these two quantities you must keep one fixed while the others change so it's easy to just imagine that um, you know the pressure is increasing uh, when you heat up a gas or that the volume is increasing when you heat up the um, heat up the gas but it's really important to know that uh, all these qu three quantities the temperature the pressure and the volume they're um, related to each other so if we have to find a relation between two quantities just it is very important to uh, keep the third one fixed to uh, model the behavior of uh, a gas or whatever medium is under study so in order to figure these relations, it's important to carry out some experiments. And uh, after carrying out some experiments, we did find out three laws. And these three laws are basically Charles law, Boyle's law, and pressure law. And we are going to study them. So first of all, we're going to talk about Charles law. OK. Um, sorry, before even getting into Charles law, I, I did say that we'll talk about absolute temperature because it did come early on too. 
when we were talking about how kinetic energy is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. So the absolute temperature, also called as the thermodynamic temperature, is the temperature of an object on a scale where zero is taken as absolute zero. Absolute temperature scales as Kelvin degree units Celsius and Rankine degree units Fahrenheit. Absolute zero is the temperature at which a system is in state of lowest possible energy as molecules approach this energy, this temperature, their movements drop down to zero uh, with the motion ceases. It is the lowest temperature as a gas thermometer can measure. No electronic device works at this temperature. The kinetic energy of the molecules becomes negligible or zero. So that's the basically absolute temperature that uh, in you know on the absolute temperature scale basically zero is equal to the no energy or no kinetic energy uh, point so charles law charles law also sometimes referred to as the law of volumes so basically charles law is the law of volumes we're going to be talking about volumes gives a detailed account of how gas expands when a temperature is increased so now we know that this uh, you know um, law we'll be talking about volume and temperature okay conversely when there's a decrease in temperature it will lead to a decrease in volume so it says basically that the volume is directly proportional to temperature now what's the you know one condition that we should really keep in mind that we just discussed it's really important to know that when we're talking about these relations, that the third quantity, which is not being talked about in, in this, uh, for example, is the temperature, uh, sorry, is the pressure, that we keep it constant, that the pressure does not change. Pressure, I'll just write P R E S X. Pressure constant. So this is really important to know that uh, we can only talk about the relation of volume and temperature when the pressure is not interfering. So when we if when we compare a substance under two different conditions from the above statement, we can write it in this manner. So V2 divided by V1 is equal to T2 divided by T1. So that's basically the equation or whatever you can write. This above equation depicts that as absolute temperature increases, the volume of the gas since we are talking about temperature, it's really important to know that we will always be talking about absolute temperature and uh, Kelvin temperature and not any other um, unit of temperature. Since all of this is related to how the kinetic energy of the, you know, if you think about the kinetic model, then in that the reason why this happens is because uh, when you increase the temperature, uh, the obviously the kinetic energy of the of the gas molecules as they increase and then move further apart and you know hence the volume increases so all of this is you know the the, the thing that basically uh, the driving element for all these laws is basically the the relationship between temperature and volume and kinetic energy and you know so the so ke of the gas molecules is basically what runs all these laws so Okay, now let's talk about some examples of Charles' law in our everyday life and everyday examples. So here are some examples by which you can understand Charles' law very easily. In winters, as the temperature decreases, when you take a basketball uh, outside in the ground, the ball shrinks. It is only uh, why this is the only reason why to check the pressure in the car tires when they go outside on cold days. So it's uh, really common to you know check the tires of check the pressure inside the car tires when you go up, uh, outside on cold days to see if they have, um, you know, what we're basically doing is they're ch checking the volume that if they've shrunk a bit or not because of the cold temperature outside or the low temperature outside. This is also the case in which the inflated object and explains why it's a good idea to check the pressure in your car tires when the temperature drops. If you overfill a tube that is placed in a pool on a hot day, it can swell up in the sun and burst. Similarly, as the turkey cooks, the gas inside the thermometer expands until it can pop the plunger. Pop-up turkey thermometers work based on Charles' law. Another common uh, application can be seen in the working of a car engine. These are some examples 
of Charles Law. So uh, ping pong ball is basically that sometimes uh, when you hit it too hard, it just gets dead. It just gets this dent from one side and how you can fix it that you can just put it in boiling water and it just pops out and it it's it's good as you know new. So what it basically happens is that it expands or uh, it heats up. So the volume inside increases and it causes it it puts some pressure on the dent and then it just pops and just gets good as new. Same as the case with helium balloon balloon that outside uh, you know in the snow and in cold it's really shrinky and everything but inside the room it's perfect. So these all just basically tell how volume is directly proportional to temperature. Okay now what's Boyle's law basically? Um, we've talked about the relation between uh, volume and temperature. Uh, we are going to be discussing another um, relation in this one. So Boyle's law is a gas law which states that the pressure, so okay, the first quantity that we'll be talking about is pressure exerted by a gas so of a given uh, mass kept at a constant temperature. So we're keeping const temperature constant. So that basically means that this will be a relation between volume and uh, pressure. So the other quantity of volume is inversely proportional to the um, volume occupied by it. That if the pressure is large, that means at constant temperature, the volume is low. In other words, pressure and volume of a gas are inversely proportional to each other as long as the temperature and the quantity of the gas is kept constant. It's really also important to know that in this case, um, the, the, the temperature is constant and so is the mass. So, for a gas, the relationship between volume and pressure can be expressed mathematically as that. Uh, where P is pressure exerted by a gas and V is a volume occupied by it. This proportionality can be converted into an equation by adding uh, by adding a constant K. Okay. So this is these are basically the graphs of if we, uh, you know, plot the graph of pressure, this is a graph of basically pressure and volume that when the pressure increases, the, when the pressure increases, the volume decreases and vice versa. Uh, however, in this case, when we plot one by V, we get the straight line. The both of these just represent the inverse proportionality basically. This is an example of, uh, this is basically an example of Boyle's law. The when all filled balloons are squeezed, the volume occupied by the air inside the balloon decreases. This is accompanied by an increase in pressure exerted by the air on the balloon as a consequence uh, of Boyle's law. As the balloon is squeezed further, the increase in pressure eventually pops it. These are some examples, bicycle pump, when we, uh, you know, pump it and, you know, downwards, the volume decreases, which increases the pressure, and then it, you know, um, moves outside, or which is, uh, syringes work this way, fish breathe through their, you know, gills in the same, similar manner, and a really good example is out of a scuba diver, that if a scuba diver ascends from a deep zone, towards the surface of the water, the decrease in pressure can cause the gas molecules of the body to expand. This gas bubbles can go on to cause damage to their organs and can also result in death. Uh, what happens is that basically the lungs can collapse in case the pressure increases. Uh, so this expansion of gas caused by ascension of scuba diver is another example of Boyle's law. Another similar example can be observed in the deep sea fish that uh, die after reaching the surface of water due to the expansion of dissolved gases in their blood. So that's also a very good example to basically understand how Boyle's law works.
for a fixed mass of okay the the the, the last uh, law that we'll be discussing is basically um the pressure law which says that for a fixed mass of gas at constant volume so we are keeping volume constant now the pressure is directly proportional to the absolute temperature so um what happens is that uh, if you explain it it's pretty it's pretty easy to just you know understand this in terms of kinetic energy that if you increase the temperature the 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 kinetic energy increases and that means that the that the that the particles inside the container they hit the walls of the container you know harder and more frequently which causes obviously the the, the pressure to increase so the kinetic energy of the gas molecules increases with temperature. The air molecules collide with the wall of the container at higher velocity and higher frequency. The pressure in the gas increases, causing an increase in volume. So that's basically how it works. Um, this is a graph of, uh, you know, pressure in time. It's basically an experiment that was conducting, and it really just shows how their directly proportional pressure is directly proportional to temperature in case we keep the volume constant. That is it.